Howdy all, I've uh, never really taken a whole picture of the final Queen Anne Pro V2. Um, people have seen various different uh, short videos and pictures I've taken, but Manny Guerrero asked if I had any pictures, and I figured I could take pictures, and those are worth a thousand words, but I figure a video must be then worth, I don't know, a million words. Um, Manny is uh, waiting for his Queen Anne Pro, and he said he also bought a Masso G3, which I have, so I thought I'd give a, just a, a quick overview of uh, what I have done. So obviously, here is the Queen Anne Pro. Um, it's on a custom cart uh, that uh, I designed and built. It's all made out of uh, three-quarter inch uh, MDF. There's drawers around this side. See the drawers here. Haven't finished installing them all because, of course, rather use the thing than necessarily finish doing it all. But I am uh, over my Christmas break here, hopefully going to get that all done. Um, here is the Masso that I have installed on just a, a you know, a monitor arm. It has a uh, vase mount. Uh, on the back of it so that you can easily do this and you know it was what a 30 40 dollar thing on uh, Amazon uh, I've taken the screws out so we can actually see the inside so this is what the inside of a Masso G3 touch looks like so there's the actual Masso G3 itself so that's the actual controller board uh, with everything hooked to it uh, I have an auxiliary uh, relay board here that I really don't have use for but I bought it so that I don't lose it I figured I probably should mount it in here um, everything's all pretty nice and uh, nice and tidy the only weird little thing they do is with the uh, the mount here for uh, the handheld unit you actually have to take the cover of it off for it to clear the outside uh, of the board, which is why you see this thing this way. And then that just comes down here and got it, you know, mounted to the side of the table. But made use of a lot of the functions on here. So I've got all of the, the sensors, uh, you know, front and back on both sides, uh, even though I don't use the front right one, the proximity sensors. Also have it wired to the motor alarm so that, that if motor trips, those will also go. Uh, wired to the spindle, the VFD alarm, so if those go off, it will also trigger. Uh, the only thing that I have that I haven't put in yet is a flow sensor for the uh, water coolant because I am using a water cooled 2.2 uh, kilowatt spindle, uh, 220 volt um, version of that. So if we close that back up, this is what the thing looks like. You know, I use it in portrait mode. It can be used in portrait or landscape mode. Uh, there's a setting for it to flip-flop between the two of them, but I like it in portrait mode, so I run it that way. So obviously I don't have it turned on right now. Let's come around here to the side and I'll turn it on. So on the back, here is where I have the switches that uh, control the controller and then the spindle. Um, and then that uh, reused drywall uh, mud bucket is what my coolant is in. Um, I'm running a mostly uh, distilled water with, oh, I don't know, we didn't really measure, but with uh, antifreeze uh, in it. Not that it ever freezes in my shop because I am in Texas, but the antifreeze does keep uh, a lot of mold growth and all that out of it. Uh, on the top of the bucket, you can see we also, um, where we drilled the hole, we put screen mesh over and then just drilled, uh, you know, just cut a little tiny slit so that there's basically no space around the top of it for critters to get in there and so far so good it's worked great uh, so the bottom one here is the 110 volt power and you can see i 
went ahead and put a uh, outlet in there too for any miscellaneous things we might need to plug in. Uh, the 110 is just for uh, pretty much the Masso itself. Uh, everything, every, almost everything else is going to be, um, you know, 220. The VFD is 220. Um, well, the, the power supplies, I guess, I didn't set them up as 220. Those are all one, uh, 120. So the top box is the, the 220 coming in. So I have these two uh, circuits mounted down there and then they go around the side of my wall over here and uh, plug into the wall. Um, all the other cabling is then just run down here and maybe not the safest thing, them being bare, but nothing else is ever in there. Uh, you can see the, the heads of the bolts here that are holding the power supplies. And so I'll go ahead and turn this on now, which you'll then hear some buzzing. And that is the, um, that's the actual water pump. Uh, I've got all of the drivers all mounted down the side here. The VFD obviously in the middle. I've got these two exhaust fans that are pulling air up from down here. Oh, got our logo, a little side side company here. I don't know how well it shows up. It's Maker's Works. Um, using DIN rail mounted uh, hardware as much as I possibly can. So uh, the white thing there is a mini circuit breaker for the 220 volt um, power. All the connections down here are 120. We've got the two EMI filters. Um, down there, the two 36-volt uh, power supplies or 48-volt power supplies, whichever it is. I can't remember what those are anymore. Um, the big gray box here is the 240-volt contactor that is used for powering the VFD and the spindle. And behind it is 12-volt power supply for all the various, for the sensors and all that stuff. I wired the VFD up with a latching circuit with another, you know, safety switch uh, on there. So this way, if any alarms trip or anything, the, v the VFD will get tripped off uh, and lose power that way. And also, if I turn off just the main power, that will also cause the contact contactor to trip off so it's a contactor that has the auxiliary um, terminals on it that allow you to connect it up to the uh, relays and trip things off so it makes it pretty nice so you can see it's flashing so the VFD is on at the moment one of the nice things with the Masso not being PC based not that you got to see it but it powers on in about 20 seconds or so at most and this is the main Go ahead, just go around this way. It's the main screen as you see it in the Masso. We do have it set up to require a password, which we have not changed from the default. And then for safety, to get it going, the first thing you have to do is trip the uh, e stop and then take it off. And then once that's off, double tap home and it will go into its homing sequence and i had stopped it a little bit off from the side so that's going to take a little bit but while that does that um not that you can really see the way i mounted everything but i basically put the cross members down and bolted them, as you can see with the brackets, bolted them to the top of the tabletop and then mounted the rails uh, on top of those with, you know, the brackets uh, on here. So now it's coming up to the top. You can see I'm using a automatic tool setter. So that's what it's doing at the moment. Um, right now is going down and touching off. So there it is. It now knows exactly how long that tool is. 
And so we use the tool setter and then we'll also use one of the uh, USB powered touch probes. I can get this out of here. Just one of these, you know, touch probes rather than using the touch plate. Um, it's powered with, uh, um, I guess it's 12 volts because I don't have five volt power supply. So, um, powered from a wire that runs up here that I 3D printed this little uh, bracket here that I call the USB garage. So this just stores, stores the USB connection that, uh, you know, I can then plug into the touch probe while we're using it and then easily just put that back into here and it doesn't go anywhere. So it, it's a, it's a nice friction frit, a frit, fit uh, with it. Um, and then it's just all, you know, your cluster of wires. Everything is, you know, neatly done using all crimp connections and, you know, things like that. But don't go overboard with wire management. Um, so things are, you know, kind of just hanging around a little bit, but they really don't move all that much. You can see I put um, washers at all the different uh, sensor points to make the proximity sensors more sensitive. Because they're obviously a lot more sensitive with ferrous metals than the aluminum. So it's a little bit safer, especially if you're uh, running on a rapid um, to get everything. But other than this, the, the you know machine's all pretty much uh, stock as a Queen Anne Pro. Um, I did 3D print my own mounts. Uh, these are a lot better, I think, than the, the stamped metal ones that uh, they come with. Um, it gives a much more positive uh, connectivity to it. Uh, here's the uh, hookup for dust collection. So I had that go up on a uh, just a galvanized gas pipe with a you know bracket up here that allows it to easily rotate back and forth. So as the head and the spindle moves around, the dust collection easily goes with it. And that's just using a Rockler um, flexible pipe along with the, the Rockler, what do they call them, Easy Fit or whatever it is, uh, connections um, on there. My dust collector happens to be just right behind me. And so I can just take this and easily connect it onto there and get the dust collection. Uh, one thing that we did add is this what I think very nice uh, dust boot. So let's move this a little bit so we can see it some. Uh, so we do have this nice dust boot, which is just held on with magnets. So it comes off very, well, they're strong magnets, but come off pretty darn easily. Make it very easy to change uh, the bit and then when you're done you just take it and it just clicks right back into place uh, one thing i am going to buy myself for christmas is a muscle chuck to replace the normal clamping uh nut and having to use you know two different wrenches to hold it and you know the knuckle busting of pulling it on and you slip and you know all that kind of stuff that kind of annoys me so i am going to get a muscle chuck to go a little bit quicker um my spoil board, I chose to use dovetailed slots and use the match fit um, system of the dovetail things. Let's see if I can grab one here. So use the little dovetail stuff that just, you know, you can slot in really easily like this and then put your clamps in and whatever other stuff you're going to do with it. Yeah, um, I've got these eight millimeter holes drilled along here so that I can put the dowel pins in to quickly and easily 
uh, locate anything off of this corner. I know this is, you know, this square here is perfectly square. So you see, I, I even V carved, you know, that edge. So that is the exact corner of the working space. And then those two pins, uh, if you put something square up against there, they will be exactly in that corner. And you know that, that you have yourself exactly where you need to be. Uh, this whole bin down here will be used for holding scraps and miscellaneous things. Uh, I plan to put a drawer here that'll pull out to hold the bits so that they're all nice right where, uh, right where we go. With the Masso, when you do a tool change, um, in fact, I can just show it here. So let's do a manual tool change. And let's say we're just gonna go to, uh, I don't know, it doesn't really matter. Uh, let's pick bit 10. So it's programmed to come out to this location, you know, every time. So I'm right near the edge and the only thing you gotta do is pop off the dust uh, boot and then, you know, change your bit. Once I pop that in, you can see it'll sit here, say, please change to that. It's telling me what bit it is. And when I'm done, you hit cycle start, which will automatically go over and do a, uh, a tool zero, which even though this isn't tool 10 that's in there, I'll go ahead and do that. So it'll automatically move over and go down and do the touch off. And then if I was running a program, the program would start and, and it would uh, go about its way. <laughs> then it goes back to wherever it was uh, when it's done. Uh, so that's it in a nutshell. Uh, Hope people get a little bit out of it. If you got any questions, please let me know and I can take some more pictures or take a uh, take another video. All right, thank you. See ya.